Oh, hello. We're out here having fun. And this is the last field we chisel plowed. It will not be the last, but it's the last one the chisel plow has touched. And that was two to three weeks after well, after we did the first bit of chisel plowing over here. Uh, this is my, am I currently at my largest rental property. Now, there's many fields to it, however. And, well, we're disking it up. I already knifed down hydras. I'm hoping to start planting soon. This will be the first corn I'm getting in the ground. Better start than last year. Last year I was waiting until June 9th for it to dry out. Um, so let's take a look, see what we got down here in the soil. We got some dry spots, got some wet, wet, uh, wet clumps, and a whole lot of roots. There was a lot of grass, so we've got uh, some organic matter being put in the soil with the roots. And when those die off. That, that's what's helping hold these uh, clumps of soil together like this. You know, the grass. That uh, makes disking slow. There's even some stuff coming out of this that's dry. And there's a few pieces of stem and root. Brad's disking right now. I don't know if he has the disc all the way down. Maybe he does. Look at those shiny new blades. So I got plenty of roots, organic matter still in the soil to hold it, no erosion issues. This field's really flat. Brad ripped off the door this morning. Yes, he doesn't even know when he did it. He caught a branch. We had it propped open to let some air in. And so we're missing a door. It's, I might be able to bend it back and pop the glass back in it. Still have the glass, so that's good. <sighs> so yes, our very organic matter filled soil. Grass on top. Now there's, this is very flat. There's hardly any slope to this. Maybe one spot over there, and it kind of rolls down towards the trees. So erosion's no issue. Uh, I don't know, I might dis this again. Might plant it. I like our 800 international planter enough. Having double disc openers and the um, depth wheels really help. We used to have a 56, and I hate, uh, now I really just like shoe planters. You gotta have them worked up so nice. Disking on an angle again, this angle, that angle. It makes it nicer following a planter marker because sometimes if you uh, disc with the way you plan, well, you'll be following the furrow right here instead of the marker. Yeah, I don't know if many of my fields are big enough for GPS. That could be entertaining. Well, I probably have my anhydrous tank filled, so I gotta go back over there and check on that. Hey guys, it's uh, 4 a.m. Um, what, May 24th? It's supposed to rain later today, and then tomorrow, and probably the day after, and then all Memorial Day weekend. So I'm making, that's nice and shiny, making some crazy attempt to get some corn planted before June gets here. Seeing as last year I didn't get started until June 9th, just that wet. Yeah, I didn't make too much dust today. Um, ended up planning with the 1086. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Doesn't look very good on the screen. Nah, uh, because it has the most lights of anything, which might be good for planting. Like I can really see what's going on back there. And I can mostly see what's going on in front of me. 
Uh, but one thing I found out, I don't even know, I'm looking at myself. One thing I found out uh, while planning after dark and trying to find your marker. Now it's difficult once the dew sets in, because then there's the dirt absorbs moisture out of the air. And you don't have light and dark from wet and dry. And once the clouds finally broke up, the dew set in. And I was fish out of water. I don't feel like guessing where my marker is, especially the fjord I'm working in is next to the road. So I want all the neighbors to see how much fun I had in the dark. So hopefully we can get back to this, uh, I don't know, in like two, three hours, get some sleep, and see what we're doing. So hopefully see you guys in the daylight. We're back at it. Ah, I'm stopping for a fertilizer reload. I got back out here, well, a little after, a little after seven. So I stopped, got a three hour nap. Stopped at four, back at it at seven. Uh, time for a fertilizer reload. Unfortunately, Brad's still sleeping. You can kind of see the 14 over there. He was disking ahead of me. Of course, I spent all day yesterday life in anhydrous, and Brad was disking ahead and behind me in places. Last night, I planted nine. There's an oddball of four or five that wraps around the house. That's annoying. I really need to plant that to hay. Or something. Just an odd shape and it seems like animals eat it a lot. A couple acres way down in the bottom. Oh so what? 15 more than 15 acres. And I gotta start where we're headed now. That's up on a dry hillside. The bottom basin of the field is still wet. Chisel plowed nicely. Should have cut a bigger hole. And hopefully Brad's coming over. He slept in longer this morning. He got a whopping four hours instead of three. Should get me another ton of fertilizer. I would bring more, but since they're chancing rain, I don't want to have it sitting outside. Come on. Ugh. Uh. Come on. Let's see, we're putting on triple, triple 19. Wouldn't have it any other way. Get the most of everything in your fertilizer. Uh, nice mix. Putting on 225 pounds of material um, as fertilizer per acre. So 19% of that, 20%, about 40 pounds each of N, P, and K. And I already put down almost 150 pounds of anhydrous. Oh, one of those bags. So, I'm growing corn on 190 pounds N and 40 P and K. Which the P and K, uh, probably plenty for corn. I don't fertilize too much on beans, so we're using up the residual on beans the next year. Now, well, some farmers will sit there and float, like do we plant corn, do we plant beans, wait until the last minute. Shoot, I had this planned out back in February, but I stick to a strict rotation. I'm OCD like that. It's corn and beans and corn. Now if we have a good fall, it'd be nice to throw weed in. Okay, that's half the fertilizer I have left. I can get about a thousand pounds of fertilizer in this thing. I never take it down the road full. Now I really don't need to be planting with the 10 right now. I don't need the lights, but it's here, it's ready to go. 
and I'm hoping Dad's using one of the other two Fords, hopefully, before it rains to lay plastic so we can get some vegetables planted in the mud this weekend. But right now it's come hell or high water. I'm getting corn in before June. Trying to change the scenario from last year a lot. Hopefully it's not a bad idea it doesn't get rained out this weekend. Most places are somewhat high and or well drained because that's why I'm planting them now. Ah, four more bags left. Well, I'll see you guys out in the field. Okay, we're getting back to it. Yeah, that basin down there is too wet. I call it the basin because I have no clue where it drains to. It just goes down there and gets flat. In my area, for some reason, I need to value the fields with a little bit more roll. Because these low, flat things hold water too well. Okay, we're getting back. There's a little bit here. I started planting parallel to the trees. And I was doing that sort of blind in the dark last night. Can barely see my marker. Uh, we're none too worked up. It's probably very just enough. Eh, yeah, wrong marker. We put a sequence valve on. Because the electronics were getting annoying. We took the monitor off. I don't know if that thing was working or not. I thought it would beep. Maybe it wasn't beeping. And then we were tied to only using one tractor to plant with. Just because it was annoying to move the monitor around. Now we, uh, doesn't matter. Put the pin in, hook up the one hydraulic line and go. This thing is hydraulic pressure one way. So I've got the uh, valve and float and use the retract, the down, to lift. So I have to pull it up just a little bit. And that way I don't have to go through a dead zone uh, where the pump is pumping but it has nowhere to go with the oil. There's a lot of clover in this field, a lot of sod. It was no-till. This is my first year here. Take over a lot of ugly no-till fields around here. Should have seen it. They didn't plant it until late and it was a weedy mess. Hopefully with some good old-fashioned iron for weed control. Oh, look at that under wraps. See, I've got four rows shut off. Um, sort of my planter monitor right there looking back at us. Or the back window. That's what I call my planter monitor. And that little blue piece of tape, <clears throat> that's my fertilizer monitor. If that's spinning, I'm dropping fertilizer. It's just something to aid, you know, sight. If I see that little blue flag of tape flip around, it's spinning. Instead of sitting there zooming in and watching to see that little hex shaft turning. You know, for many, many years, farmers planted without a monitor. And for a while last night, I was getting pretty good at not using markers because I couldn't see. As you can tell, there's not a whole lot of soil dryness. Don't worry about making dust. And you can barely see the furrow up ahead. You can tell where the disc went. Which, the more I think about it, I really need to be looking for a better soil finishing tool than the disc. And something faster. Maybe I'll get the road to spike out for you guys. I don't know when or how. That thing will, uh, that'll turn some dirt. Maybe put it behind the 14. Cross my row. And I'm having so much trouble with that very right hand row. Last night I had the bolt for the spring come out for down pressure. And now it's wanting to, wanting to plug on me a little bit. Not a lot, but you can see that little bit of fertilizer that fell out once we stopped. Now 
I kind of do this angle on the go because there's going to be overlap, there's not going to be overlap. Save a little bit of time and not clutch it so much. Uh, you're seeing the fun we're having in this field. I'll catch up to you when I get uh, to some other place more interesting.